Deacon Homer do a beautiful job on the genealogy. Yes. Oh, you better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. He's making a list, checking it twice. Gonna find out who's naughty or nice. Santa Claus is coming to town. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. Oh, you better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. You know, you got the notes. <laughs> now, when you sing or you, when you listen to actually to the words of that song, you begin to realize something, that it's actually a wake-up call for our kids to look at their behavior and check as to whether or not they're going to be on the naughty or the nice list for Christmas. The kicker, however, in the song is puzzling out what being good for goodness sake is. Does it actually mean that I'm to be good because it's the right thing to do without getting a reward for being it? Usually it's not until we're adults do we figure that one out. You know, Advent really has been our wake-up uh, season, hasn't it? Helping us really to prepare us to encounter the Lord both in the manger as well as in his second coming in glory. Advent, for some, is about making lists to assess how well we are prepared to meet the Lord and welcome him at Christmas. But the season takes us just a little bit further. And it asks us to allow others to walk this journey with us and then to help us as the darkness and the cold seem to take a greater hold. Now we've heard them from our own Sunday readings. The prophet Isaiah speaks of the hope that awaits us when we choose to level the mountains of our pride, fill in the valleys of our hardness, straighten the crooked paths of our lives, and transform the deserts of our barren loves into loves that are open for healing and forgiveness and reconciliation. John the Baptist is the one who cries out in our wilderness to prepare us by inviting us to come to the River Jordan for the forgiveness of sin and all the reconstruction work that is necessary. Because really, in order to get to the manger in Bethlehem, we actually need to cross the River Jordan. And this year, behind the scenes, St. Joseph, St. Joseph is showing what it means to do the will of God, when, especially when everything within you is telling you otherwise. St. Joseph reminds us of God's gifts of love and justice given to those who do his will. And you know what? Advent would be incomplete without Mary journeying with us. This poor peasant girl from Nazareth who in humility says yes to the will of God to bear and give birth to Christ in love and then to believe from manger to the foot of the cross. You know, the list, the songs, Isaiah, John the Baptist, St. Joseph, the Blessed Mother are all leading us to encounter the Lord in the manger. And they're all leading us to be prepared to receive the dawning of God's compassion in Jesus and if we have crossed the Jordan River to come to Bethlehem, we will see in Christ, this Christ child, the God who knows powerlessness, who knows cold, who knows poverty, whose own parents were ignored and marginalized to a barn, where his own birth is witnessed by animals, placed in a feeding trough, and wrapped in 
strips of clothing. His first witnesses, we hear, will be the outcasts and the shunned of Jewish society, those shepherds, a group of uncouth, rough, and unlettered men. If we look then into the face of Jesus, this Christ child on Christmas morn, will we see and welcome the God who throws no one away, who does not write off anyone as hopeless or irredeemable, the least promising, the slowest, and the struggling as sometimes we can? Will we want to encounter the God who came to us because he sides with the poor and hears their cries by being born like one of them in the cold and darkness, confronting the prejudices that those who have less are often thought to be less. If we heed the words of the prophet Isaiah, if we hear John the Baptist and take a dip in the icy river of Jordan of forgiveness and repentance and transformation and seek out to be just in our relationships like St. Joseph and have the humility to trust in the love of God like the Blessed Mother and come to Bethlehem's manger to encounter the Christ of the poor, are we then to be pre prepared? Will we be prepared to see within this child's face our own poverty? All that impoverishes people, and we know as a nation what can truly impoverish us with the horrific events on Friday? Will we want to see all that will marginalize people, all that creates walls and barriers that are both economic and other situations that are erected between us? In the eyes of this child of the poor, will we see and hear Jesus speak from his own poverty, who befriends the poor, who protects the poor, who preaches the good news to the poor, who sets the blind, the lame, free, and feeds the hungry and cures them. In short, Jesus was offering them as examples in how we are to follow him. In the Christ child, we're going to see how he loved the poor, the sinner, the outcast, and the suffering. He will suffer, and he will die, and he will rise for all who know their need. For all who know their need. Their poverty for him and his redemption. So do we really want to see on Christmas morning a child who asks us, that we recognize not only the poverty our pride and our fear can bring upon others and ourselves, and the poverty of chilled and weary hearts with little hope or desire for change, but also that poverty of our need for his light, his love, his life, and his warmth. Do we want to encounter this God in this season to prepare us to encounter in the Christ in that poor manger surrounded by humble poor parents and beasts of burden to recognize our own impoverishment, our own poverty. For the season of Advent was going to always ask us with Isaiah and John the Baptist and St. Joseph and the Blessed Mother that we walk with faith that we walk with compassion, that we walk with forgiveness, that we walk with mercy, that we walk with justice, and that we bear God within us who wants to be with us and he wants to be there for us. The best gift then that we will offer to the child of the poor in the manger this year is recognizing our own poverty for his life, his light, his warmth, and his love, and that we share it as if our very lives depended on it. And the second best gift that we can offer are our desires to serve and to touch the hearts and the souls of the poor and to see within, in them this Christ child and in turn be changed and transformed by those who we serve because they're serving us just as much. 
And so in these final days of Advent, brothers and sisters, preparing to encounter Christ as a newborn in Bethlehem's manger and in his second coming, what are the songs that we still need to sing as a people of faith and hope and love? O come, O come, Emmanuel, O holy night, O come, all ye faithful. Or maybe this year we can also sing, especially for the children and teachers killed, the parents, the spouses, the siblings in Connecticut, that we will stand with them, their community, believing that no darkness will overshadow, no cold will consume our hearts as people of faith, hope, and love, because that was the reason why Jesus was born. And so maybe today we do sing number 622 in your music books, the Lord hears the cry of the poor. <laughs> 